Uh, <laughs> All right, welcome back to the other side of the coin, ladies and gentlemen. Things have really escalated about the whole Raheem Sterling being booed. Um, if you've missed out on the video earlier on today, do check that out where we, where we talk about this particular incident. But since then, it almost feels like there have been some journalists who have been coming out and talking about this. And it almost feels like these journalists, and even to a certain degree, Pochettino, they're, they're trying to blame the fans for the players' lack of performances. They're trying to blame the fans for such a hostile environment. The atmosphere has got to be better. I was trying to sympathize. Earlier on today, I was trying to sympathize. I was saying that, look, if I was to go to the matches on a regular basis, yeah, I'd be critical. Yeah, I'd be upset. Yeah, I'd be annoyed by certain performances of players, but I don't think I'd ever boo. I've just not been that type of a person. But I can understand why some fans would boo. I've seen a lot of your comments. I've seen a lot of comments on social media. And the argument is that when a player does well, you clap. When a player doesn't do well, you let them know that that wasn't good enough. I think this season, before we get into the news, right, I think this season we've seen far too many times where players probably being a bit too selfish. Players playing for themselves. They're not really playing for the team. They're not really playing for the badge. You want to see them really fight. And that's been one of the worst sort of uh, scenarios this season. We've seen recently how players slowly, like for example, Nicholas Jackson, there's been an immense development where you can now clearly see he's fighting for the team with and without the ball. He's doing well. Raheem Sterling, as we all know, there's been far too many times where he's created a selfish act where he should be squaring the ball. He doesn't. We've seen dramas when, when we've won penalties, how he's wanted to take the penalty. And Cole Palmer is the, you know, not, I suppose, the 100% designated penalty taker as per Pochettino. But we as a fan base know that Cole Palmer is the one who's been taking penalties recently and he's been scoring goals. And Enzo Fernandez had to come in and, and take the ball away from Raheem Sterling. So we've all seen these sort of incidents. So don't make the fans the culprit here. This is, this is where it has escalated since earlier today, UK time. It almost feels like these journalists are now trying to blame the fans. So let's check out the news um, in regards to how all of these matters have escalated since earlier this morning. Chelsea Dodgers, uh, this is coming from Matt Law. Matt Law is the one. Matt Law is taking advantage. Matt Law, you know very well you know, how I feel about Matt Law. This guy is a massive drama queen. He's, he's seen an opportunity now and he's honing in on it. A Chelsea player representative has been surprised at just how quickly some of the fans has sat and stood among can turn on their own. And he's adamant that a number of players inside Chelsea squad are very much aware of it. Good. You should be aware of it. This isn't a bad thing. Don't make it sound like this is a bad thing, my lord. Chelsea fans have a certain standard they want to see players abide by. When those standards are dropping and declining, of course the fans are going to make some noise. You're performing poorly. What do you want the fans to do? Keep the blue flag flying high. Come on, man. It doesn't work like that. Yes, you back the player. Yes, you back the team. But we're not stupid. We're 11th, for God's sakes. So, of course, the player needs to be aware. This is why you, you would have seen the news recently when Poch said some of the players are not coping well with the expectations of playing for Chelsea Football Club, expectations of playing for a big club. Well, they better, they better start building that expectation. I've seen a few, few fans on social media say, we've done this to Mudrik, we've done this to Nicholas Jackson, we've done this to Raheem Sterling. Of course, yes, we have. Some of these players are changing their... They're tuned now. You see Mudrik, the way he's performing in recent, recent times. Nicholas Jackson, another one. Players need to be aware. This is not a bad thing. Fans will, at times, I wouldn't say turn on them, but make them feel that this is not good enough. So these Chelsea insiders feeling shocked and surprised. No, this is just stock standard behavior. The players know, he said. They hear it and pick up on it. They might say they can ignore it or block it out, but it's an impact. Well, I'm sorry. 
if this mentally hurts you, then you're not cut out to be a professional footballer at the highest level. I think it was, I saw some comments from Emil Heskey, him saying that when you play for a lower club, these sort of things, these mistakes, these poor performances by individuals, it may get overlooked. But at a big club, it can't get overlooked. I'm sorry. All eyes are on you. Yeah, there, there might be the odd game where you might not perform. We've seen Cole Palmer go through this season not performing in few of the games. No one's gone slandering him and going after him because overall Cole Palmer's been magnificent. Consistency needs to be there. Even when you're inconsistent, you can't be dropping howlers. And that's exactly what Raheem Sterling has done. You know, that, that match against Leicester, and he's done that several times this season. And this is not just about Raheem Sterling. There's been other players that have done that several times this season. Mudrik, not that long ago, everyone was going after Mudrik. Nicholas Jackson, as I've said. There's many more. Ben Chilwell. Desassi. Defence. Let's not even go to the defenders. How many times have we gone after Thiago Silva? Buddy Ishiu. Levi Cowell on that left side. We as fans have the right to let these players know that's not good enough. Don't make it, don't counterattack us by saying, oh, we are the ones who are making it difficult for these players to perform. I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. The strength of feeling aimed towards Raheem Sterling in recent weeks, which boiled over during the Leicester game, surprised some Chelsea insiders who thought they had seen it all before. Surprised. Those Chelsea insiders, if you're surprised, hey, you probably don't deserve to be at Chelsea. This is what I think a lot of the fans are trying to say in recent times that. The attitude inside the club, yeah, it's proper mid-table. Trying to make us like Brighton, Brentford, Crystal Palace and them lot. Oh, no, you know, the, the atmosphere is too hostile. And, oh, no, you know, Chelsea insiders thought they've seen it all before. Some things, yeah, I get it, man. Maybe we are over the top a little bit. Obviously, Jorginho being booed, as I said earlier in the video, um, in my first video earlier today. There's been many other cases. I'm pretty sure Kai Havertz has been booed as well because of his lack of performances when he was at Chelsea. Timo Werner is probably the only... And I guess this is the thing that I want to share in regards to this. Players need to understand how to connect to the fans, connect with the fans. Timo Werner is someone who missed a lot of opportunities, but for some reason, he was never booed. He's been able to connect with the fans. These players, if you have a look at Raheem Sterling, he doesn't really connect with the fans. I like Raheem Sterling. And because of his performances, well, I know we have not seen that at Chelsea. But I do have to say one thing about Raheem. Raheem really doesn't do his best to connect with the fans. And that, look, that comes down to personalities. No problem. Some players will have the personality to connect. Some players don't. But you've got to put a bit of an effort. If you don't have that personality to connect, if you don't have that charisma, maybe you need to show that on field. So, look, once again, um, these Chelsea insiders, yeah, stop making it feel like, stop making it, you know, this sort of lovey-dovey situation and we must be always loved even when we perform poorly. No, that's mid-table talk. And this is why where we are, man. We, we, need to, we need to up our standards. Many saw Raheem Sterling's decision to take the ball from Cole Palmer as selfish, but it was also a problem of Maurizio Pochettino's making. The Argentine has not set a designated penalty taker and lets his players decide on the pitch. And I think, look, this has created a bit of an issue. One of the biggest reasons why fans in the match against Leicester was very upset with Raheem Sterling is when he took, when he, when he, you know, took that penalty. Because ultimately, Cole Palmer has been taking the penalties recently and he's been taking it well. So why go there and, and take a, take the ball away from Cole Palmer? There's some reports saying that, oh, maybe Raheem Sterling was trying to build his com confidence. That's, that's not a match to build your confidence in. At that point, it was crucial that we scored a second goal. FA Cup quarterfinal match. That's not the match to build confidence. That's a match to put things away. So these are certain things that has triggered the fan base to, to go after Raheem Sterling on that particular match. So 
And then, yes, of course, Pochettino is partly to be blamed. If he had clear instructions that, look, Cole Palmer is the designated penalty taker, he could have he could have avoided this situation. And this is where part of the blame has to go to Maurizio Pochettino as well. Alan Shearer, Cole Palmer has been the best player for Chelsea. He looks confident when he's taking penalties. Why would you even contemplate taking it off him? Why would you put yourself forward when you have a record like that? He further goes on to say, what on earth is going on there? Seriously, I was getting angry and I didn't really care. I was thinking, why on earth is Raheem Sterling taking the ball off Palmer? Palmer scored five out of five. So look, you got a pundit that's getting upset. Obviously, a fan would see all of this just like the pundit and would get annoyed as well. So once again, you know, this whole narrative that fans are impatient, fans are making it too difficult for the players. No, that's not right. That's not right. Players are doing some mad stuff. And in recent times as well, look, maybe I'll even contribute. As I said, Pochettino is partly to be blamed. Players definitely playing for themselves, being selfish. Recently, we saw Tim Sherwood as well on live on TV talking down on players when he was interviewing Cole Palmer. All of these things maybe contribute to creating such a hostile environment. So don't blame us. Don't blame us. You know, there are other people that are trying to inflate, infiltrate us. Maurizio Pochettino, I'm not here to do what the people want. Um, so a little bit about Maurizio Pochettino now. Um, also, I'm not stupid. I say, uh, for, for me, I saw Michele Mudrik and we analyzed he was tired, doing some stretching. So we decided first off for Mudrik to come off and then Raheem Sterling. We are professionals. So this was another particular... <clears throat> Situation what made people very upset to see Michaela Mudry come off and not Raheem Sterling. And Maurizio Pochettino is coming out and defending that situation by saying that, look, Michaela Mudry was getting tired. This is why we decided Raheem to come off later. Mudry first off. Uh, we want to stay professional. So, look, maybe, maybe, I mean, they, they would know better. I, I, I'm, I'm not there. I'm not watching Michaela Mudry on uh, every minute by minute situation. Maybe he is. One thing I will say, Mudrik never seems to finish 90 minutes. So is that a is that a fitness thing with Mudrik? I don't know. I don't know. It looks like it is. But that's another contributing factor that annoyed the fan base that this guy was playing well. Why is he getting taken off? And 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 not Raheem Sterling, who has who was dropping a ton of stinkers, um, you know, in that particular match. Kani Chukamika has come to Raheem Sterling's defense as well. Look, I, I like this. I like the camaraderie. I like the brotherhood in the in the in the team. But once again, I think this is now going overboard. I think this is now, you know, don't almost to the point it, it's going to a direction that we are the fault. The fans are the fault. Please don't make it seem like that. Kani Chukamika says Raheem Sterling is like a big brother. For us youngsters, especially for me, Noni, and Cole, Raheem has helped us a lot since we came here. He's always on us showing what we can do well and what to improve on. He's always on us inside and outside football. Raheem is a big part of what we do. He's like my big brother. Look, that's great. That's great to hear. That's how it should be. He's an experienced player. He's, he's the player that has played nearly 10 years or close to 10 years or maybe even more than 10 years of Premier League experience he should be the one looking after these young players of course but you need to be able to do that on the field as well you know by performing well showcasing you know by by being an example with your decision making with your execution you know being being a leader on the field he's not raheem sterling doesn't come on come up you know come across as a leader but it's good to see that, you know, Kani Chukamika, we also saw Noni Medueke defending uh, Raheem Sterling on Instagram when, when a particular fan was coming after him. Kani Chukamika on whether Raheem Sterling can handle the criticism. 100% Raheem is an experienced player that's had an amazing career. We know what a great footballer he is. He has had goals, assists, and won so many penalties this season. It happens at the end of the day. He's human and player missed chances. He had an off day and for sure we stick behind him. Let's not forget he's got an assist for Cole's, Cole's goal. Look, from my side as well, a bit of defense for Raheem Sterling. There's been cases this season where 
he has been robbed of assists. He could have got a lot more assists. So look, yeah, he does get penalties. He does get assists, gets odd goals here and there as well. But he needs to be better. He needs to be better. But as I said, this is not just about Raheem Sterling. It goes about every single player. Play for the team. Don't be selfish. Because right now, the narrative is as if we are the ones who are making it very, very difficult for all of these players. Privately, Raheem Sterling acknowledges he was poor against Leicester, but he must feel like he's trying to win over a group of fans who have never made him feel welcome since his 47.5 million move from Manchester City in 2022. Once again, we have never made him feel welcome. I don't understand this. What more could we do? Do, do we, do we where, when the match start, when he's about to come into the field, should the fans be there with like some, some uh, I, I don't know, what, what do you call it? Um, I think in Hindi you call it varmala. You know, those, <clears throat> those things you put, uh, on your on your <laughs> on your body, you know, do we put those you know, lovely things, flowers on him, or something like that? Do we greet him with with some sort of you know crazy crazy reception? When he like, what more can we do as fans? He needs to perform well on a regular basis, and he's going to get the respect. And once again, this is not just directed to Raheem Sterling. It, this whole thing has now become a Raheem Sterling show. It's not. There's nothing, there's no agenda against Raheem Sterling. Chelsea fans just want all players to play for the team. Raheem Sterling is determined to shrug off the boo boys and make a success for his Chelsea career. He's ready to snub reported interest from Saudi Arabia this summer and is determined to win big trophies with Chelsea. Look, as I said, maybe it's getting to a point where he may have to leave. Um, I've seen MLS links as well saudi arabia is there there's certain things that we probably need to consider uh come summer um, once the window opens but look he's on big money at chelsea football club and he might want to stick around now a little bit in regards to pochettino pochettino has been running his mouth as well and as i said earlier in the video earlier video today i was sort of looking at pochettino's comments and thought yeah maybe i, I like that bit of fire but now once again don't take the mick out of us pochettino this is where i get annoyed when he talks Pochettino, he has said that there is a need for a better atmosphere, but it is hard to see that happening when the perspective of Chelsea players and stuff is so fundamentally different to that of the supporters. For most of this century, getting to Wembley has been viewed as means to an end, not the end itself. Pochettino claims that an FA Cup semi-final appearance should constitute a feather in the cup is unlikely to play well. Yeah, it, it is it is going to be difficult. It is a change of mindset for, for the fans. We've gone through an era of so much success to a, now an era where we're getting told and forced to appreciate mid-table mediocrity. Of course, it's going to take a bit of time. Of course, we're not going to accept it. And then again, we, we haven't demanded anything crazy this season. I think the majority of the fans probably demanded at best get Europa League, Champions League, should have been the target, but we didn't get there. But to sit here and telling fans we need better atmosphere, fans, you know, they 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 can't seem to forget the old Chelsea under Roman. Uh, you know, this is a new project. This other, don't try and sell eleventh. You're eleventh, and let's be honest, we've gone through Carabao Cup and FA Cup, but beating quite a few Championship teams not really come across the big boys across the entire competition. And when we did come across them, we lost. Liverpool in the final in the Carabao Cup, we lost. Now we got Man City in the FA Cup. We'll see what we do. So this whole thing about just appreciate what we have right now, you know, create a better atmosphere. No, the blame is there with the current squad and the manager as well. No doubt about that. Our current squad should be doing better. Better than 11. Ben Jacobs, Chelsea don't feel like Pochettino is the sole cause of blame for mid, being mid-table. They think that injuries are a factor and that is just a young squad. Pochettino is very liked by many of the squad. I think therefore, Baghdad Iqbali, Todd Bowley, the wider ownership and co-sporting directors, Lauren Stewart and Paul Winston Lee will think long and hard before making a change unless their hand is just so forced by string of poor results between now and the end of the season. So nothing is predetermined with Pochettino. So look, 
this is what I've been saying in recent times, right? I just have this feeling that perhaps <clears throat> these Chelsea owners and the board, they might just stick around with Pochettino. And look, I don't like Pochettino. I don't like the way he talks. I don't like the way he manages. I, I'm not, I don't think tactically he's good at all. But I've always said I'm willing to give him another season if he does well. This season so far, he's not done well. Making it to a Carabao Cup final and and not winning, that's not success. You don't go to Wembley to lose. You go to Wembley to win. Now we're in the FA Cup semifinals. What are we going to do? If we get knocked out by Man City, what are, we, are we meant to just sit there as fans and, and clap? Okay, you made it to the final. You were runners-up in the Carabao Cup. You have made it to the semifinals. Potentially, we'll finish, I don't know, 8th, ninth, whatever. We've got... Look, this is not what we can accept as a Chelsea fan base. And this is what is getting very, very annoying at the moment. We're being forced to appreciate it. This is why, like, you know, these owners, they, they might be very much looking at Pochettino and think that he's done a very good job this season. We'll see how the season ends. There's still a few matches to play and there's things to salvage. The next few Premier League games are going to be important. We could potentially get into that sixth position. Okay, if we can get into sixth, if we can beat Man City and go into the final and win the FA Cup, then we can start thinking that, okay, do you know what? Not so much of a bad season. We rectified that. And maybe Pochettino gets another look. But right now, it seems like Pochettino most likely will get a look anyway. Because... These owners, this board, they probably see this situation that we have right now and they think it's acceptable. Let me know, ladies and gentlemen, what your thoughts are. Hope you guys have enjoyed this. Smash the like button. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Hit the bell notification to stay in touch with all my content. Until next time, everyone. Take care. See ya.